Hi there, well it's day two of the 50th parliamentary term of the New Zealand House of Representatives. Yesterday we had the commission opening which is where members of parliament go into the parliamentary chamber uh, where they take the oath of allegiance and agree to do their job to represent the people of New Zealand to the best of their ability. We also saw the speaker and the deputy speakers uh, sworn in uh, to their offices and today of course we've had the speech from the throne which is where the Governor General reads out the speech on behalf of the government, setting out the work program for the next uh, two or three years, and then an opportunity for various political leaders to respond. This year's speech of the throne was a little bit shorter than uh, previous years, 2,100 words, if you're the sort of person that adds all of that up. It was about 3,500 words in 2008 when we first became the government, and 4,500 words in 2005 in Helen Clark's last term. But we decided, you know, sometimes less is better than more. And uh, if you go and have a look at uh, the this, this speech from the throne in the British Parliament, the most recent one was 900 words. So we Kiwis are still a little long-winded maybe compared to the Brits. Um, I use my speech to talk about the future for New Zealand, to talk about our programme, the areas that we think are critically important, obviously uh, the economy front and centre stage, our desire to get New Zealand back into surplus so that we can have that strength and robustness and that security that we know New Zealanders value. Uh, the need to, to uh, look very closely and work hard on the rebuild of Christchurch, our second largest city. Uh, I talked about the mixed ownership model, a program that we think will deliver real benefits for New Zealand, give them an opportunity to invest in critical assets. Talked about welfare reform, that New Zealand uh, as a country has too many people uh, trapped on welfare and that we need to help people through and off the welfare poverty trap and into work if they possibly can. I talked a little bit about state sector reform. Uh, the public services um, are a very important and critical part of a good functioning government and uh, we just need to uh, introduce better technology and IT and fundamentally streamline our activities in that regard. And of course finally just a bit about education and the, the enormous importance of education as a liberating factor. So with that, uh, we finish the sort of parliamentary term, if you like, for 2011. We come back at the very end of January in 2012. I think it's going to be a very busy 12 months next year. 2011's been uh, quite a tough year for New Zealand. Of course, we had the devastating uh, Christchurch earthquake on February the 22nd. Uh, but our fair share of challenges throughout the year, whether it was the arena uh, coming adrift on the... Um, uh, the Astrolab Reef, uh, right through to the Maui gas line breaking down. Uh, we've had the Royal Commissions of Inquiry underway for both the Pike River Mine disaster and the Christchurch earthquakes. Uh, there's been many other things that New Zealand's had to contend with, um, further, further reverberations, you like, of, of the, crush, of the um, global financial crisis. Uh, and a series of other challenging issues. But I always think at the worst of times, you see the very best of New Zealanders, and in 2011 we've definitely seen that. So to all of you, make sure that you have a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. I always think Christmas is a time for family and friends to enjoy the very best of New Zealand, to recharge your batteries, and to get ready for all that 2012 may bring. For me, I'll be spending my time with my family. Uh, we're going to go off to Hawaii as we traditionally always do. Great chance for the family to get together, put on some shorts, t-shirts, slap on a bit of suntan lotion and kick back and enjoy life. So have a great Christmas, a happy new year and um, look forward to seeing you all in 2012.